Yo, what's good, original crew, man? We're back. No Mr. Ballin' today. We got Never Ignore Native Wisdom. They always say the old folks always right, right? That's what they say. They say, hey, that's that's one thing we're missing nowadays. You know what I'm saying? The old wisdoms. You know what I'm saying? Like the meme we just uh, we had to. The old man said he popped his, uh, <laughs> his granddaughter across the face. Oh. Hey, we need more of that, man. We need more of them old folks in the, still, still land. Because y'all new parents. Y'all new age parents. Y'all don't. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Did you see the video I sent you today and them kids? Mm -hmm. I said, that's the most ghetto ass shit I ever seen. Sorry, y'all, but uh, <laughs> we got new Mr. Baller, man. Make sure y'all check out the links in the description box. Down below. You already know where to go, man. You want the first part, all you have to do is check out down below. Also, if you enjoy it, enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I've been saying that lately, bro. It's annoying. <laughs> I did it real, real... <laughs> It ain't that funny, child. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it that funny? Because it's not. It's not, but it is. I don't know why I've been saying doy lately. Like, I'm fucking my twice and I can't get okay, my... Okay, okay, come on, come on, come on. Ah, man. If you enjoy sorry, today's visuals... Lock it in with a thumbs up. But, hey... Never ignore native wisdom, which is so true, man. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right, let's get to it. Let's check it out. Let's see what we got. One summer day, a man named John Randolph was hiking through a remote forest in Colorado when he began to smell something terrible. Intrigued, he followed the smell until it brought him to this clearing, and in the clearing, John saw what looked like an old campsite. Now, John is out in the middle of nowhere, and so the idea that somebody was camping out out here in what looked like a long-term settlement was pretty bizarre to John. And so John walked into the clearing to see what was going on, and when he turned the corner and saw the ground in the middle of the campsite, he saw something that at first he couldn't even process. It was just so horrible, it just looked fake. But eventually he realized what he was looking at was real, at which point John turned around, sprinted out of there, and began <coughs> screaming for help. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all we do and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please invite the like button to go out to lunch with you but once you get there, spend the entire time chewing as loudly as possible with your mouth wide open. Also, please subscribe. Some stuff you need to do. <laughs> but what restaurant? Ah, my word. What restaurant would cost you to talk with your mouth wide open? Like no. To I chew with Panera, your Panera. Panera. No. You get you get you a nice Panera sandwich with some chips. Them and you're ass, chewing with your mouth. Kettle. Loud, you know. You ain't gotta chew like this. No, how, no, you, no. how you chew with your? Oh. <laughs> no, you don't. Cause kettle chips are hard. You like kettle chips? I do like kettle chips. So you gonna be crunching? No. Them. Look, this how I chew. <laughs> like you chewing some damn gum. See, we're supposed to be serious right now. You wanna have a laugh? You should have laughed like that at the memes, Charlie. Those things was going too fast. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even keep this up. Your, this your left, uh, leftover last time. Huh? I'm sorry, y'all. All right, let's go back into it, man. It's pre-workout. To our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. On the freezing cold night of February 8th, 1874, a 65-year-old man named Israel Swan sat around this roaring fire with a big group of men inside of this valley in western Colorado. The men around the fire, including Israel, were all gold prospectors, which meant they traveled the western United States looking for gold. <laughs> See, can we be 
serious? I know. What the fuck we even, what are we laughing at? <laughs> Bro. No, no. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's happening. This is so embarrassing. It's like you took a line of powder before you. That's crackhead energy. I'm so energy. sorry, y'all. I, I, honestly. You're giving off crackhead energy right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get can we get into the serious I topic? Know. I know. We just bust out laughing. I'm like, we talk about prospectors. You like these nigga did for okay, gold. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and they ain't turning no shit but wrong. Okay, stop for real. That's what you laughing. No, stop. I'm sorry, y'all. Gold prospectors, which meant they traveled the western United States looking for gold. But over the past several weeks, this group of prospectors had been trapped in this valley because of all the terrible winter storms. Mm. They had these storms coming in that each time would dump up to six feet of snow. But on this particular night, as Israel sat by the fire, you know, enjoying the flames and hearing people tell stories, one of Israel's friends, one of the other gold prospectors, whose name was Alfred Packer, he stood up and basically pitched the whole group as to why they should come with him and leave the valley right now. Basically, Alfred told the group that, you know, the weather is starting to turn a bit. It's not as bad anymore. You know, the snow's starting to melt. And Alfred said, I know a pathway out of here that will take us out of this valley in just two weeks. And it'll bring us right to Breckenridge, Colorado, which was an area that was known by prospectors for having lots and lots of gold. And so Alfred's basically telling them, you know, this is a win-win. We can get out of here sooner and we can get rich. After Alfred made this pitch, he sat back down and everybody just stayed quiet for a second. And Israel, he kind of looked around and watched to see if anybody would take Alfred up on his proposition. Now, Israel knew, unlike him, most of the other prospectors didn't like Alfred. They said he was lazy and difficult. But Israel felt like that was really not the reason they did not like his friend. He believed the reason other people did not like Alfred was because Alfred had epilepsy, which meant he periodically had seizures. And because he had seizures, it kind of made him a liability for journeys like this, where, you know, the whole group really needs to rely on everybody and everybody needs to pull their own weight. And so they were kind of worried about a guy who at any moment could just become kind of useless because he was having a seizure. But for Israel, Alfred's epilepsy really didn't matter. He didn't feel like Alfred was some huge liability. He felt like Alfred was actually very smart and quite bold. And so for him to stand up and make this pitch just kind of felt like in keeping with who he was. He was somebody that wanted to get things done. And, you know, Israel liked that about him. However, just because Israel liked Alfred, that didn't mean he was just going to naturally go with Alfred and do his big plan. But he was at least thinking about it. And as Israel was weighing out the pros and cons of, you know, whether or not he should go with Alfred, he happened to look across the fire and he saw one of the men, this really big guy, was sitting there. The biggest thing in the situation with Alfred is, all right, bro, you, you the one say you know this path. You deal with epilepsy. I ain't, I ain't, I'm not going to go with you, bro. I, I... Because, say for instance, you have a uh, seizure and it's like, oh, because well, people with epilepsy, you can have a mild seizure. You can have a, you know what I'm saying, a severe yeah. one. So we don't know the path. You know the path. So, so what if you have a severe seizure and dealing with some, knowing someone who deals with epilepsy, y'all forget things. Yeah. Whether it's long term for, or short term, y'all will forget some shit. I'm not, ta I'm not dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? And then if I decide to go with you and it's just us two. And I'm really doomed. You know what I'm saying? That's a that's that's low key. <laughs> now you might have the path, but I just can't trust. <laughs> it. He happened to look across the fire and he saw one of the men, this really big guy, was sitting there looking really serious and just shaking his head slowly back and forth, mm -hmm. like, "No, you guys can't be considering leaving early." And then the big guy stood up and he held out his hand right in front of Alfred, basically telling him, "Like, don't say another word." And then this guy, while still looking at Alfred, he said, if you leave right now, all of your friends will die. Oh. And then this big guy sat back down again, and then everybody around the fire just sat there, really tense for a few seconds, in total silence. The big man who had just spoken was not a gold prospector. Mm. He was actually very different than the rest of the people sitting around this fire. His name was Ure, and he was a Native American chief of the Tabawatch band of the Ute tribe. 
and Chief Yure had actually saved the lives of everybody, Israel and Alfred included, who was sitting around this fire. Because a few weeks earlier, this whole group of gold prospectors had wound up lost in this valley, which was the valley where Chief Yure lived with his tribe, and he had found them stumbling around on the brink of death with all the snow coming down. And so Chief Yure and his people brought the prospectors some food and water. They helped them set up a campsite right near a river. And then Chief Yure told them to stay put in this campsite and ride out the winter. And then in the springtime, when the snow melts, it'll be safe for you all to leave. Now, at first, the gold prospectors were only thankful and just totally psyched that Chief Yure had found them and given them this campsite. I mean, this was great. And so they had no problem agreeing to, you know, wait until the spring to finally leave. But now, after several weeks of being kind of trapped in this camp, the whole group was really starting to get restless. They were worried if they didn't leave soon, there'd be no more gold for them to mine. And for Israel specifically... Troy, it's wintertime, bro. Y'all ain't finna mine for no gold in, in the snow? I don't know. Nah, I ain't saying you know it now. I'm just <laughs> saying it doesn't make sense to go mine for gold in the snow because I'm thinking snow, ice. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's too cold to honestly mine, so... Just, I ain't gonna lie, agree would make you do some crazy, make some, like, some of the most stupid. I would say, like, when do people normally, like, do Every that? time, like, in my mind, I picture it, it's, like, springtime. You know what I'm saying? Like, when when the ground is loose, mm -hmm. it's not a hard, because you gotta, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I don't know. That's just my thoughts. <laughs> I might be more wrong. pressure on him to go out and find gold because he had told his family that this would be his last treasure hunting adventure ever. And so he really couldn't go home empty handed. He literally needed the gold in order to continue to survive and take care of his family. So when Alfred stood up and broke the kind of tense silence and said to Chief Ure, you know, thank you for your concern, but I am gonna leave early and I just hope others will come with me. You know, at that point, Israel saw the conviction in Alfred and Israel really felt like he did need to leave now. He needed to get that gold. And so Israel said, you know what? I'll go with you as well. Uh -huh. And then after Israel said he would go, four other gold prospectors also volunteered uh -huh. to leave early with Alfred. Chief Ure could tell he was not going to change any of these guys' minds. And so even though he felt like this was a terrible idea, he shifted his focus from trying to stop them to just trying to give them as much information as he could about the area they were going to go into. And so he called all the volunteers who'd be leaving early over to him, and then Chief Ure drew a map in the dirt on the ground, and he told Alfred and Israel and the other four volunteers that you have to follow the river out of here. It'll bring you to this mountain range called the San Juan Mountain Range, and you cannot attempt to go over those mountains. You will not make it. You gotta follow that river and go around the mountain range. And then once you do, on the other side, there will be an outpost where you can stop, get supplies, rest, and then continue the rest of the way towards Breckenridge. And then after Chief Ure had explained all this, he made sure to mark an X on his dirt map exactly where the outpost would be. And then Chief Ure just turned around and walked over to his horse and rode away. And then shortly after that, Alfred, Israel, and the rest of the gold prospectors also turned in for the night. The next morning, Israel, Alfred, and the other four volunteers who were gonna be going on this journey, they got up early and began packing up their stuff. And as they did, one of the other gold prospectors who had not volunteered to go with them, who would be staying in the valley until the springtime, he actually came forward and said he would help them carry their supplies as far as he could go, you know, using his horse. But at some point he would need to stop, drop off their stuff, and then they would be on their own. And so the men were very thankful about this. And so shortly after eating breakfast, they were all ready to go and they hit the trail. As Israel and the rest of the prospectors began to hike their way up and out of the valley, they began to see off in the distance the huge jagged mountains of the San Juan mountain range, but they were careful to kind of veer closer to the north to stay along that river path because they knew they were not supposed to go up and over the mountains. And as Israel trudged through the snow in a line of men, he held on to a coffee pot, a metal coffee pot that he kept hot coals inside of. This not only kept his hands warm, but also if he ran out of matches, he could easily start a fire using the coals. It was an old trick he had learned. And so as he's clutching this magnificent warm coffee pot in the freezing cold weather, Israel heard someone walking up behind him. And so he turned around and he saw it was Alfred. And he looked totally miserable, way more miserable than Israel was. 
And so without even thinking about it, Israel just handed off his warm coffee pot to oh, Alfred. And Alfred to took it and clutched it. You said what? I'm sorry. You the motherfucker who got us walking. <laughs> You know what? Like, don't. No, I need you to be a. I need you to be a, as attentive as possible. You need to be alert. You know, you know it's, it's cold. You the one talking about you know the way. And you, obviously, he didn't because they following uh, the the chief You're, path. Yeah. Like, so, obviously, you didn't know. You ain't, He's just determined you ain't to go buddy. get this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, he was like, I'm going to do whatever. Like, sitting here is not going to do anything for me. So. And it but, takes you longer <clears throat> longer time away from family. Yeah, true. But why did y'all decide to go during this uh, time of the year anyways, knowing that it's... Come on now. Any, anybody. That's my only question. That's why I said, when do people normally... Like, when did they normally go? Or the they were expecting to go up there... This is another thing I'm thinking. Maybe they decided to go during this time, knowing that a lot of people won't be going to to do it. So it's, it's less competition. Maybe. And so, know. like, the f soon as we can get there while it's cold and freezing, we can do the we can get work more. and we can get the most of it. Mm -hmm. And then, man, that's greed, though. Israel just handed off his warm coffee pot to Alfred. And Alfred took it and clutched it and was obviously so thankful. Now, none of these gold prospectors had struck it rich. They were all basically poor. But of all these gold prospectors, Alfred really had the least of all of them. And as a result, Israel kind of felt protective of Alfred. And also, Alfred was half the age of Israel. Alfred was 30 years old. And so Israel kind of viewed Alfred as like a lost kid trying to find his way. Alfred had also confided in Israel that when the Civil War broke out in the United States, Alfred had attempted to join the Union Army on two different occasions because he wanted to fight the slaveholding Confederate Army. But in both cases, they kicked Alfred out for his epilepsy. But that had not stopped Alfred from tattooing on his arm his battalion information and his name. And unfortunately, because Alfred could not read or write, he misspelled his name when he gave it to the tattoo artist. And so when he got the tattoo, it did not say Alfred for his first name. It said Alfred, A-L-F-E-R-D. And from that point on, that was his name. Nobody called him Alfred. They called him Alfred. And so this was kind of embarrassing for him. And then after getting rejected from the military, Alfred had kind of bounced around from one job to the next, never really putting his roots down and never starting a family. And so again, you know, Israel just felt like this was a guy who needed some help. And so after Alfred very happily accepted that coffee pot from Israel, he in turn reached into his jacket and pulled out a flask with some alcohol in it, and he handed it to Israel, almost like a thank you for giving me this warm coffee pot. And then the two friends walked side by side for a while, you know, passing back and forth the flask and the coffee pot. And then by late afternoon that day, when the snow was really starting to come down, the prospector who had volunteered to use his horse to help move some of their supplies, he had finally reached a point where he said, you know, my horse can't go any farther, the weather's too bad. And so he dropped all their supplies and then he turned and headed back down the trail. And very likely as these men watched him disappear down the trail, they all had the same thought. I just got to suck it up for two weeks to get through this treacherous journey and I will get to Breckenridge and I will become rich. Mm. Two weeks would pass by and Alfred, Israel, and the other four prospectors did not show up at that outpost that Chief Uray had pointed out, which was on the other side of the San Juan Mountains. That was going to be their first official stop before they continued the rest of the way to Breckenridge. And then another two weeks went by and still they did not show up at the outpost and they didn't show up at any of the other camps in the surrounding areas. Now, Alfred's big plan for this group was really dependent on the weather holding up. When they left, it was true that the weather was improving. It was snowing less. But within a couple of days of this group setting off on the trip, those winter storms came back with a vengeance and just dumped snow all over the valley and all across the trail this group would have been on in their attempt to leave. 
But the only people who knew that these men had embarked on this perilous journey was the men themselves, and then also Chief Ure and the other gold prospectors who had decided to stay in the valley until spring. But even if Chief Ure and those other prospectors knew that Alfred, Israel, and the others were in trouble, you know, they would have no way of helping them or getting to them or even communicating to the outside world. They were completely stuck in the valley and basically couldn't do anything. And so in short, it appeared that Alfred, Israel, and the other four men were totally lost somewhere out in the wild, but nobody knew. But that would all change on April 16th, 1874, roughly two months after Israel, Alfred, and the others had begun what was supposed to be a two-week-long journey. That morning, a group of officials who manned the outpost that Israel and Alfred and the others were supposed to go to, they were having breakfast in one of the outpost's little log cabins. And as they're eating and talking to each other, suddenly from behind them, the door to the cabin flies open and these officials, they turn around and they see standing in the doorway is this totally disheveled looking guy with long hair that's sticking up in the air and a huge bushy beard. And in one hand, he's got a rifle. And in the other hand, he's got a metal coffee pot. And his eyes were darting like crazy side to side and he was clearly in shock and he was trying to speak, but he just couldn't. This man was Alfred. And it was obvious to the officials that this man is in dire need of help. And so without even asking him any questions, they whisked him inside, shut the door, got him some food, got him some water. And immediately Alfred's wolfing down the food as fast as he can until he began vomiting, at which point he apologized profusely and said, you know, I've been starving out in the wild for weeks and, you know, it must have done something to my intestinal tract. You know, it's probably damaged, but frankly, but to be completely honest, he was the only one that, like, if anything ha had happened, he's the youngest. Yeah. So he probably can hold out the longest. With all those others being older, and then Israel, was, they said, was twice his age. So if he's yeah, 30, yeah. he's 60s. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was going to really, true, true, true. so you got to you gotta use that knowledge, too. So even though he is sick, he will be possibly at the b better health than everyone else. Mm -hmm. The officials did not care about the fact that he threw up all over the ground. They were worried this guy was going to die right then and there. And so the officials helped Alfred get cleaned up and put in warm clothes. And then Alfred asked them, you know, do you have any whiskey? I want to kind of warm my body up. And they said, no problem. They handed him some whiskey. And so Alfred threw a couple of shots back. And then after that, it was pretty obvious that Alfred had kind of relaxed a little bit. And then at that point, one of the officials asked Alfred, what happened to you? As soon as Alfred was asked this question, he shut his eyes and kind of grimaced, like even the thought of what had happened to him was just too painful to think about. But after a moment of silence, Alfred, with his eyes still closed, told the officials that he had been with five men and they were trying to hike their way out of the valley to get to Breckenridge, Colorado to look for gold. But as they were hiking this trail, this huge storm came in and made it really hard to navigate the trail they were on. And so the group decided they would actually cut through the San Juan mountain range. The thing Chief Ure said, don't do that. Do not go over the mountains. They decided to do that. But as they were traversing these treacherous mountains, it was clear that Alfred was just not keeping up with the group. And so unfortunately, they made the decision to leave Alfred behind to die. And he knew he was being abandoned to die. And so he had to watch as his five friends, you know, disappeared into the snow. But amazingly, Alfred did not die. Mm -hmm. Instead, he would spend the next nearly two months stumbling through the snowy forest, having wow. no idea where he was going, eating roots and flowers and looking for shelter any chance he got. But the thing that really allowed him to survive out in the wild was when he was abandoned by the five others, he was in possession of that coffee pot that had the coals inside of it. And so at night, he was able to start fires. And then also at one point, he was so hungry that he cooked his leather shoes in the fire and ate them because again, this guy is starving. And so really he was on the brink of death when he randomly stumbled into this outpost and found this cabin. After Alfred finished telling his story, the officials were just totally shocked and silent. And Alfred eventually would ask them a question. He would say, have any of my men come through here? Did anybody else survive? And they would say, no, 
It's only you. We have not seen anybody else. Now, the officials did not send out a search party right away, mostly because it seemed kind of obvious that Alfred's men were likely dead by this point. It's been two months since they started that journey. You know, the chances are just not good that they have survived. But even if these other men were not dead yet, the officials had no idea where to begin their search. They knew that if they actually wanted to go looking for these guys, they would need Alfred to lead the search because he's the only one who knows where they could be. But Alfred was not healthy enough to go out in the wild and lead a search. And so for several weeks, Alfred just stayed in the outpost, resting and recovering. And then finally, when he was healthy enough, he would go out and lead a search party to go find the missing men. But unfortunately, he couldn't find anything. And so it wasn't until that summer, when all the snow had finally melted, that the mystery was finally solved about what happened to those other men. On August 20th... What you think? Oh, I'm just, in my head, I'm just like... They lost course. Yeah, they just lost course. They, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping none of them like decided to like split up or anything like that. But I, I kind of doubt it because no one really, like we can't split up because we got this map. So we only, you know, can use this map to navigate us where we well, need to go. They ain't even got that map anymore because y'all lost, y'all took left course. That map was straight well, true, true, of course uh, of the river. I mean, I mean, yeah, but and then the other yeah. the other person who knew the pathway, this other pathway was Alfred. Alfred so was the one who said yeah. he knew a shortcut. So if y'all decided to not go the right, the path of the one, the map. So now I'm just thinking. Unfortunately, we don't know what we're doing. We're just trying to figure it out as we go. And that's the worst thing to do is be out in the wilderness in the wild trying to, f to figure out where we're going to go, especially in the winter and snow. So we Colorado? Yeah. You know, come on. Like, it's Colorado. The snow. Like, they get some of them. And there's mountains and all this. That's one of the most... That's one of the places you... And at this time? In the eight, yeah. For two I'm just months, thinking, unfortunately, all of the others perished from the winter storm like that's the only thing i can think of like if they never made it to why you why not just turn around you get what i'm saying and go back yeah to... greed just we gotta get there because we only thing we thinking about is gold that when it got that to... rough yeah why y'all just said hey maybe we should turn turn back yeah i mean i guess it's easier said than done, yeah, obviously, sure. but that's somebody should have said, "Hey, how about we turn back?" It's it's actually worse than we expected. Yeah. Be. Then deciding to go up the mountains. Exactly, especially since y'all were warned not to. Yeah. So. But never ignore native wisdom, right? Yeah. That the mystery was finally solved about what happened to those other men on August twentieth, eighteen seventy four. A traveling artist named John Randolph was hiking through a forest in western Colorado, roughly in the area where those other prospectors would have been walking on their attempt to leave the valley. Yeah. And as John Randolph was walking through that area, he began smelling this horrible smell. And so John followed the smell until it brought him to this clearing. And then in the clearing was what looked like an old beat up campsite. And so being curious, John walked into the clearing to see who was in this campsite. But when he turned the corner and saw what was on the ground in the middle of this campsite, he froze because on the ground in the middle of this campsite were five dead men all lying perfectly in a row. They were the source of the terrible smell. And right away, even though John was in shock from what he's seeing, he could tell that these five men did not die from something natural. Mm. One guy was missing his head altogether, and the other four had obvious signs of something being smashed really hard, probably repeatedly, into their heads. But that wasn't all. The other thing John immediately noticed is that the five bodies were in very different states of decay. Two of the bodies were basically skeletons, but the other three were not. They were basically intact. Their chests had been cut and flayed open, but they all looked like they had died somewhat recently. In fact, one of the men looked so lively that it seemed like he was just sleeping, despite the gaping wound in his chest and his head that clearly indicated he was dead. Now, why somebody getting to come in aliens? 
Did, <laughs> I wonder did they end up you know uh the one uh that we had um like what? the in that was in Canada. Well no, I'm just saying like one of those type of ordeals kinda like, okay, we're without, we don't have anything, like now we kinda gotta like start like sacrificing oh, you talking about each like, other. Nah, like, nah, 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 nah. Nah, nah, nah. What do you think? You talking about as far as like like trying like to, to survive. Stay survive <laughs> to survive, yeah. No, nah, because because also you got to think about this is August. They wouldn't still be in this in this uh, location if that was the case. They would have had now all the snow have melted. We can now move and go. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I know he's gonna tell us. Yeah. I'm just thinking. No. No. Possibly, especially with the the different like stages of like the decay of the bodies. I'm just trying to figure out. So, like at, could have so at first I was thinking animals, you know what I'm saying? I was like, but when he started talking about the different levels of decay, I'm like, well, it's not animals. Mm-hmm. Or I'm also thinking, remember that one story he was talking about the people in the uh, the in the valley mm-hmm. in the valleys and stuff, and there were natives or mountain people. You got mm-hmm. you got that. My thing is, maybe he's also warning y'all not to go into the mountains because also we know the like the type of people who are in it. Because you got to understand, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, natives, understand. you have certain people who are protective of certain areas. He's like, hey, I'm not, because as soon as he said, see, like, as soon as y'all mentioned, he was like, hey, if you leave, trust and believe because we can protect you. Mm-hmm. You leave from. You're not going to survive. You're not going to survive. And he wasn't talking about the weather. He was talking about y'all won't survive because somebody's going to kill you. They, they're they not going to, they're probably not going to tell y'all everything because it's still like they got to protect their people at the end of the day. It's, they have to protect their, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's a high chance of possibility. He was giving y'all a warning. Also, I know you want to go. So you have an easier chance if you stay along the river. Mm-hmm. The more mm-hmm. when you venture up the mountains, because there's there's things in the mountains. There mm-hmm. are people who hunt. Cause you got you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying, yeah. I feel like they were attacked and killed. Some was hostages. Mm-hmm. Until, you know what I'm saying? I feel you, yeah. Lucky for Alfred, though. Gaping, despite the gaping wound in his chest and his head that clearly indicated he was dead. Now, John wanted to turn and run away, but he had this morbid curiosity. He wanted to know what he was even looking at. You know, what happened to these guys? And so, kind of against his better judgment, he walked a little bit closer to the bodies. And when he got close enough, he noticed something else that was totally off about the scene. When he was looking down at these men, he could tell that the wounds they had sustained, especially in their chest, looked surgical, like whoever had wounded them, whoever had cut them, had done so with an incredible amount of precision. This was not random hacks that got these guys killed. This was like a butcher carving up meat. And then John happened to look up from these five bodies, and he noticed just a little ways away was the remains of a burned out fire pit. And then there was a trail that kind of led off into the woods behind the fire. And so again, you know, John, he wants to run, but he can't help but be really curious. And so he walked past the bodies, he went to the fire pit, and he followed that trail kind of back into the woods. And he found this ramshackle shelter kind of tucked away in the woods that was abandoned. No one was in there, but it had all the signs of someone living here for a pretty long period of time. And then suddenly it was like all these pieces came together and John realized what he had just stumbled on. Clearly, those five men had been murdered, and the person who murdered them very likely lived in this camp. And over the course of what looks like weeks or months, this person was butchering these men and then cooking their body parts over that fire and eating them. This is like a cannibal camp. And John, you know, he's thinking, Is this guy going to come back? You know, whoever lives here, are they coming back soon? He didn't know. And so kind of in a panic, he pulled out a sketchbook, he sketched the area, and then he turned and sprinted out of there to go find help. It would turn out John, the illustrator, was totally correct about what he thought was happening at that camp. After Alfred was left behind to die, those five other men carried on into the night up into the mountains, and then somebody attacked them, began killing them, and eating them. And that person 
was Alfred. Mm. That was why Alfred had survived for so long. It wasn't just that he was able to make fires at night. It was that he was able to make fires at night and eat his friends. Now no motherfucking way. Didn't see that shit coming. That's the reason why he was throwing up too. No, no, because it just started, stopped happening in August. Was so he's been out there this whole time. And and let me tell you. When, <sighs> That's the reason he knows the fucking area too. I, I, listen, when I said what I said, I said what I said for a reason, but then I also, in the back of my head. I don't know what you're talking about. What you said, you didn't say it a lot. So what you talking about? <laughs> about the, about, about. It was one of them trying to survive. That was just my thing. But I, I thought about Alfred, but then I was like, well, if they left him behind, but then I was like, he's telling a story. They're no longer here to tell. I mean, they're they're not around but to he, tell their story. You're telling the story. But the thing is, it's John and Alfred kind of put stories together. But yeah, my thing yeah. is, so Alfred stumbled back upon the people in April. Mm -hmm. It is August now. Yeah. So you so, never went back so. home. You stayed in the woods, in the wilderness. You know where these people were the whole time. And yeah, did you get you addicted? But you didn't want to. Did you get addicted to the flesh and was like, I have to continue to consume them? Because some people, they some you never know. Some people, once they get that taste, they like, I like that taste. The only thing is, I'm wondering, how was he able to, or was he like doing it? Well, no, because you couldn't have did them all at the same time. Because I wonder, how were you able to, one by one, because no, no. everyone was at a different stage of de you know, because decomposition. That's the, so that's I'm the trying biggest to, point. I'm so I'm wondering, like, so they the just, like, stand around letting you, like, hey, we know you. No, you know no, and the fire pit was still fresh. So that was still, and the last person he just put over there still had a fresh, body looks still fresh. It hasn't decomposed. Right. I'm just trying to wrap my head around everything because I'm like, okay, the first person you did it to, did they not wonder like how and what happened to what happened to y'all friend? And and then is it a possibility <laughs> he also didn't make the military because he psychologically wasn't let's, capable? Let's, 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 it, it might not be the epilepsy. It might just be the fact. Before that, I start jumping to conclusions, let's or, just finish it. Or is the possibility that epilepsy also affects his memory as far as remembering what the fuck he does? I don't know. Oh, excuse me. That was why Alfred had survived for so long. It wasn't just that he was able to make fires at night. It was that he was able to make fires at night and eat his friends. Now, no one has ever been able to actually determine how Alfred went about killing these five men or even when he killed these five men. All we know is that based on the investigation, four of his victims appeared to have been asleep when they were murdered. But the fifth victim, who actually was Israel, the one guy who really oh, liked Alfred wow. and looked out for him and was kind of like a father figure to him, he was the only one who showed signs of a big struggle before he was murdered. Hey. While Alfred denied killing all five of the men, he said that he basically only killed one of them and it was self-defense and somebody else killed the other four, you know, it was kind of confusing. You know, despite those claims he had, the one thing Alfred never denied was the cannibalism. In fact, Alfred straight up told authorities that he grew to really like the taste of human meat. In fact, when they searched that campsite that John Randolph found, they would find the remains of a dead deer that was right near the campsite. But despite it being right there, Alfred never attempted to carve it up and eat it. He just kept going back to his stockpile of human meat and eating that. In the end, Alfred was convicted of murder and he was sentenced to 40 years in prison. But in 1901, when he was 92 years old, he was granted parole, and right away, Alfred became a vegetarian and then died a few years later. Wow. 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 This From is... the... Hey. Oh. Wanna listen to it? I don't know. What is this? In hundreds, all the way through the 1900s, Bodmin's St. Lawrence Hospital was one of the largest running asylums in all of England. But in 2002, it was permanently shut down due to so many accusations of patient mistreatment. Now, after it was shut down... Uh, 
And you know something else I thought about as far as like the different stages and why some of them kind of probably looked a little bit more like because you got to keep in mind too it was like super cold during the first. But it was it was August. August. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying. <sighs> so my thing is, how are you able to preserve the body? Well, it was August when he found it, but then it was April when he stumbled upon the. Or my it was August when he found he found the 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 bodies. It was August twentieth when he found right, the bodies. When... The bodies, some of them were barely decomposed, it was just skeletons, and there was literally one that had looked like it was Fresh. the person who just. My and that thing. Was Israel. Okay. No, no, it it, it that wasn't necessarily Israel. It, he never said. Which, well, I, which I, I'm individual. assuming it was Israel because he was the last person. No, no, he just said. No, I he did say he was the last person. So I'm assuming that his. If the other ones were were killed earlier, then their body would be more decomposed. Is what I'm saying. Then, so, okay. I'm well, gonna, hold on, hold on. You might be. I'm not gonna. I'm not. No, listen, not listen. Gonna. You might be right. Reason why he said he wasn't the only one. Who he said he only killed one. He got hooked on the flesh. Israel possibly. That's the reason why they had a scuffle. Pete. He ate the body. He got it. But now that I'm thinking, because I'm just going off because four, just with the information that was given, four were, were, you know. No, two were barely decomposed. Four were, the was it looked like they probably was killed in their sleep. That's what he said. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It was a struggle with one. That's right, what he and said. it was a struggle with one, which was Israel, Israel. right? So... I believe what so, you're but saying. when? Because I'm not about to just sit there after you just did this. No, 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 no. You ain't going the direction that you was going into at first. I went. Well, you, you trying to you, you trying no, to you got off, trying to take you, got, you to no, another path. You got off your own path. The path. What's the path I was on? A path was on. Because you took me to that path. What's the path? Because you even when you said Israel probably was the last body, which could be true. Yeah. Is it a possibility? That they was doing it together. They were doing it together. They killed... Because my thing is, in April... And then he Israel got so hooked on it. No, no, like, no, 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 no. Let me, let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. In April, Israel stumbled because he, he possibly got lost or something happened. He could have had a seizure. And, and Who? I Al mean, Alfred. Alfred. Alfred could have... He could have had a seizure and got lost and stumbled off. Remember what Baller said. Israel was a very protector of Alfred. Mm -hmm. Is it a chance of possibility? They knew they they were struggling. Hey, we're lost. We're not gonna survive. Or have they possibly been doing this anyways? You what? Pete, what I'm saying? Is it a pot? Cause cause Alfred said he only killed one. Mm -hmm. Alfred said he only killed one. That was a struggle with Israel and Alfred. Alfred killed Israel. Israel killed the rest of them. And it was time for Alfred, because <laughs> Alfred probably knew that he was uh, he was out there. Israel probably had been out there this whole time. Somebody, because they could not been found. They, they left the campsite with mm -hmm. everybody else in February. Alfred didn't show back up until April and he was stumbled out there delusional mm -hmm. when he got real real food in his system mm -hmm. he threw it up because mm -hmm. they have already been eating on human flesh yeah mm -hmm. is it a possibility as well Alfred took off running away from them away from Israel because Israel was trying to attack Alfred and Alfred fled that's why he stumbled upon the people. Cause okay, two well, months, how did Israel pass? I'm I'm not done. Okay. I'm just giving you story by story okay, by story. Go ahead. Then Alfred stumbled upon the people. After he's like, yeah, he's looking frail. He's been eating human flesh. Yeah. Y'all still not gonna look like, you know what I'm saying? But it's April now. Everything has thawed out. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden we we need you to show us the area so we can and you took a long time trying to, because you know Israel's still out there. Okay. You know that, you know for a fact he's still alive out okay. there. Now, you got April, May, June, 
July, okay. August, four months later. Okay. Four four months later, that's when the campsite was found. Okay. The campsite was found with two badly decomposed bodies. Mm-hmm. That's two people. Mm-hmm. One that's not as badly decomposed, mm-hmm. but still. Mm-hmm. Now you got Israel was the last one. Hadn't been really. Is it a possibility as well? Afro never went back home. He end up rejoining back with Israel. Eventually, you know the secret. I know the secret. We both gonna have to take one of us gonna have to take each other out. And I know Israel is a possibility. You, I killed one. The one I killed is the last one I killed. I learned because you got people. A lot of stuff Afra knew. Israel taught him. Mm-hmm. Israel was the only one that know, knew the trick about the cold and the the cold in the uh, the coffee pot. Mm-hmm. Honestly, bitches, that's my coffee pot. You ain't willingly taking that bitch from me. Mm-hmm. You took it and ran. We're not gonna leave. I'm not gonna leave you for dead. And we just walk off and you keep my coffee pot. Because I know that's what I need to survive. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to survive from from, uh, being able to start the fires and stuff. That's what Israel, everything you you knew, that's what Israel knew. Mm -hmm. So Israel is teaching y'all also how to survive. He taught you how to survive. Mm -hmm. Because he looked at you as a son. So, okay. also, it could be to the point where after he was feeding for flesh so bad that he killed Israel. I believe Israel killed everybody and the only person Afra killed, but he didn't know how to properly do it. That's the reason why it looked surgically, but he didn't He didn't know how to fully do it the way uh, Afra did it. I mean, the way Israel did it. Because mm-hmm. obviously somebody cutting up the bodies, gutting it, cutting it. So what you're saying is, because I, I, cause you can go, you can speculate and go with any, because mm-hmm. you really don't know. So you can formulate any type of story or whatever. So after he stumbled and found the people and they helped him or whatever the case may be. And it, keep in mind, they wanted, they wanted him to help them search for his friends, but he was too weak and stuff. So he re- they said that he... Supposedly he rest up and stuff like that, and just burn time. But what I'm saying is, if we, if the story you just said, so you saying, at what point did he go back out there? If he was supposed to be resting up and stuff like that, or do you think he 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 went there in April, four months between the time he could have rested up for six weeks and they went on a search. I can't find nobody. I'm gonna just go on a path. Uh, I'm, I'm supposed to be out here anyway, searching for gold. I got to make an excuse to get away from y'all. So, cause so I what know you think is, he was like, well, you know, I'm just going to, since it's, you know, spring now, mm-hmm. or whatever, I'm just going to go and, search and try to them. search on my own for him, look for him. But and he knew where they were at and stumbled back up on him. Mm-hmm. And he had been feeding for flesh, is what you're saying. So Israel and, was still out there. And he knew but shortcuts. My thing, but and, my, and he knew shortcuts. But this is my thing. This is my only thing. And I'm done with it. Because, again, you can go either way with it. Why would y'all, if Israel's still alive at the time that Afro's, Afro, whatever, stumbled upon, you know, why would y'all split? Why did y'all split in the first place? I said, I, said, I, I had already gave a hypothesis. I said, it's a possibility Alfred was, uh, Israel was about to attack Alfred. And Alfred was like, hell. Well, if you were about to attack me, I'm not going to go back no. and look for you. You never know. And that's the thing with these type of stories. Like, I mean, and it happens. You don't so want to tell me. Ago. You don't want to tell me to that Israel thing. I mean, no. I just, I normally my brain just be all over the place, and I'm just trying to like any because you trying can, to stay with a certain path. Well, no, I was just trying to think of every little thing. I'm like, okay, this could have happened. Let's let's you know discuss that. This could have happened. This could have happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to like figure out, but without me actually seeing. The crime scene and actually seeing the bodies and actually seeing like what state the body was in, how the bodies were, like all of that, you really don't know. So, so let me ask you this: So, if you take it on his word that Alfred said he only killed one, Alfred said he only killed one, and Israel death was from a struggle, but he didn't. 
typically it was it's gonna be a struggle because it's gonna be a harder kill. So if that's the case, somebody had to kill the other ones. Right, right. I mean, I get. And they weren't obviously they weren't all killed at the same time. I get, I get your logic, and I do somewhat, you know, agree with it. At the same time, my only thing, my only gap is if you left and. In April, stumbled upon the thing. What would have made you go back? And the only thing I could think of is if Israel was still alive. Well, you got a taste for the flesh. Because obviously know. they already oh. been eating on flesh because they were missing February, February, March, April. So about two, two, two and a half months already missing. Mm -hmm. Two, two and a half months. You ain't surviving just naturally off roots. Especially mm -hmm. in the freezing cold. You talking about leather? That's... That's like eating human flesh. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you threw up because you've been eating human flesh. So now the food that you are... It, yeah, we get all of that. He admitted, okay, yeah, we've been eating them, whatever the case might be. My only my only question is, at who killed who? At what point was these people killed? And if the last person that died looked like it was a struggle, what actually happened? That's my only, that's the only questions I have. Like, we already know, okay, y'all. Another. Y'all, whoever, you or whoever else killed the other friends and. Yeah, yeah. Y'all were eating on their bodies, their flesh. Another good question is, is was this Alfred or Israel first time going through this hiking mm -hmm. in this area? Because like I said, why are y'all searching for gold in December. Mm -hmm. Why did Afford suggest going through this trail that I know and Israel being basically the first one to say, oh, yeah, we can go that way. We can we can veer off. Because you knew everyone wasn't going to agree on uh, going. You just had to split up the group. My, uh, and I want to be done with it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, my thing is, because I feel like you try, are you trying to make it seem as if this is something that you do? It's a possibility. I was thinking, I was looking at it more of a thing of survival. And that's nah. what I said in the beginning. I was mm -hmm. like, I'm wondering, was this a survival thing? Or was nah. this actually like a, a plant type of thing? But nah, then why would it be planned if y'all didn't even... Because by April, y'all can y'all can move because the snow didn't melt by then. Y'all can, but my move, thing is, move and, and, and who you think it was planned? Who you think was the plan? Because it couldn't, it wasn't even Israel. It wasn't even his idea to even go and hike on this, uh, uh, according that's why to the I said, story. That's why I said, uh, is this y'all first time going? Because if this is not y'all first time going, this is something y'all do anyway. But you like, hey, hey, let's let's do this and then get other people. Because you got to. You got to bring some other people because we, we already know we're plotting to kill y'all. and we But we can't say, say for instance, the group is... 10, 15 men. We can't kill all y'all by ourselves. We have to get a few of y'all separated. You don't just pick up, wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to eat, eat flesh. And then, because the, cause the last... Yeah, cause, you don't. Because the last fresh body was found in August. February, March, April, May, June. You don't keep a fresh body. A body won't be that fresh by then. It's too hot outside. De it'll start decomposing. All of them should have been de decomposed. Yeah. Hey, y'all, spend what's <laughs> up, man? Because because at the end of the day, Alfred, he was no he. Why why is the why is it a fresh body in August, but you were found in April? You found the people in April. Sorry, things just not adding up. I'm thinking it was a. Mm -hmm. And you admit to eating him, but you only admit to killing one. Because you, if you admit to eating him, you should have just admitted to Al Kill. You could admit to everything. You only, he only admitted to what he did. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Y'all let us know, you man. Y'all let I mean, us know what y'all feel any about. Type it, of man. Yeah, this can be this can be a good. I, I know like, discussion afterwards. Topic. I want to think about it because right now yeah, I, I know really think because I don't want to continue like and yeah. make the video longer. But yeah, yeah, I know you will. But hey, man, spam us up in the comments. Please I can't do. wait to be able to stream with stuff like this with y'all. Most definitely. So we can be able to communicate real time and have that real. A little open bit better dialogue. too. So real that open can, dialogue. Like, yeah. Because I feel like a lot of stuff get lost in translation. Like trying to sit here and think and like and your so, brain going. And we can yeah. all have like piggyback off each other. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, spend my sub. Let us know y'all thoughts down below. But as always, 
I do go by the name DJ Nikita. This is We are. We are. <laughs> Watch out for my promise. Keep my money long, get my team strong, get me run away from my promise.